Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Fool's Gold. Let's check it out. To set up for Fool's Gold, all you're going to do is take each one of the decks and shuffle them and put them in their areas. You have the hills, the forest, the mountains, the river, and the lake. You have these nifty neato player shields and you'll put one in front of you. It'll tell you what type of gold and silt and gems and other cards are in each one of those decks. <laughs> and also gives you the player order turn, but you really won't need it because the game is so simple. Anyway, you'll put your player shield up. You'll start with, depending on the number of players, three or four meeples and six coins. First player will also get the little pickaxe, and then you will begin. Now, on your turn, what you're gonna do is the first player, whoever it is, is gonna roll all these die and then they're going to put them out in the little areas of where they uh, where the dice fall so one would be heels two if there's any twos those would be in the forest threes would be in the mountains four uh, the river and five's the lake so the game would look like this but let's say that you rolled a six well any sixes would go right here so let's just say that was a six then the six would go there and the forest would be empty and there wouldn't be anyone there if that's what i rolled instead of a two so on your turn you can choose one of four actions the first one would be to plant your little cowboy meeple into one of these areas now remember dice have to be in those areas I couldn't just place someone in the forest because there is no two there so I'd place them around wherever I'd wanted to and I would have to pay that amount so for instance if I want to go to hills and I want to go to four I would put my cowboy there and I would pay four gold coin and what I would do is I would place these in front of my player shield you know, showing that I've already used them. Now as another action, you can take one of your cowboy meeples and place it in front of your player shield where your money's being kept. And when you do that, you can take all your money back and put it back behind your player shield and use it again. But of course that meeple's out of play because now he's in front of your player shield. Another action you can take is you can assign any sixes, if there are any, to one of these areas, any one of these areas. And you only have to pay as much the cost as however many dice were there previous. So for instance, if I wanted to put a die here, it would cost me one, two, three gold coins. If I wanted to put it over here, it would cost me two gold coins. And if I wanted to place it here, it would cost me nothing because there were no previous die there. But doing that would pay, basically open up the path for me to go to the forest if I wanted to. And then finally, the last action would be to take any remaining meeples that you have and just place them to the side of the board um, if you have someone there. So if I had someone there, I could place it there. And I'll show you the significance of that in a minute. So after everyone has completed all their actions and placed all their cowboy meeples everywhere, then you're gonna go around and score each one. And how you're gonna do that is you're gonna draw these cards here. Now, you're gonna draw as many cards as there are cowboy meeples times the number of die there, which is why you may want to assign extra die to a place because that would give you more cards to pull from from the deck. Okay, so here's an example of, you know, everyone placing out their meeples and the round ending. So what you're going to do now is you're going to score each deck in that order. If there's no one there, then there's no need to do anything. But let's go to the river. And what you're going to do, depending on how many die and people are, that's going to determine how many cards you're going to pull. It's going to be dice times the number of people people over to the side do not count. So in this case, it would be two times three, which is six. So I'm gonna draw six cards from the deck. So I take six cards. My first one is, oh, gems. Uh, now gems is like set collection. You can only grab per player one gem from each deck. And the more that you have, the more money you'll get at the end of the game. So that's one card, but I still gotta draw six, uh, five more. My second one's gold, so I'll just put that down there. So I got gold and a gem. Third card is more gold. I'll put that in that stack there. Fourth card is silt. Silt is nothing. That is garbage. Yuck. And let me see. The fifth card is, oh no, it is foul weather. Now foul weather means we have to draw one less card, which means 
you know, basically I'm done. Even though I could have drawn six, I have to stop at five. But let's say it wasn't foul weather. Let's say it was, oh wow, okay, here's another one. False claim here. So let me just go ahead and tell you what this does. If it's a false claim, you'll keep drawing out until you have as many as you have. So one, two, three, four, five. I'll draw one more. For six, it's another one. So what you're gonna do, the false claim will basically have you shuffle the cards here, and then you're gonna randomly remove one of the cards from the deck. So let's say I'm gonna remove this one, and it's the one gold. Good, that doesn't hurt me that much. And so now I have a three, a one, some silt, and a gem. Now, if we look at the river here, it goes in this order. Whoever's at the topmost corner will get to pick four first unless, as you see, blue player put, put one of their characters over there. That means they have more cowboys out there. So they will trump me in this because I only have one, they have two. So blue gets to pick first, and let's say blue will go ahead and take this gem, yeehaw. Well now they're done, and their cowboy's gone too, so now it's just me now, of course I'll take the three gold. And then, of course, we do the same here. Two times two, we pick out four. One, two, three. Oh, no, another false alarm. And four. So I shuffle through them. Maybe I got rid of a four. And then, obviously, blue would take the four gold. Purple would take three gold. And basically, that's how you would work it. So let me focus in and show you another scenario in this game. Let's say that there were two of us and one die. So two times one is two. And these were the two cards coming out. Well, obviously, blue player is going to take the four gold, right? Well, I'm left with jack squat, it looks like. So as purple player, I got two choices. I can either leave and retrieve two gold from the pool, which means I'll have more gold than other players, which is always a good thing. And uh, Or instead, I could just lay down and rest and wait for winter. Now, when you do that, you have to resolve, of course, all other uh, places first, and then you come back, and anyone who's laying down for the winter will roll this winter die, and whatever they get, they will pull that many cards from the stack, and they get to choose one. Now, it's a crapshoot. You may get some good stuff. You may just get, you know, five silt or something, uh, but it's a risk you take when you wait for the winter. Now, as I said, at the end of every round, each player is going to take another meeple, they're going to take an additional coin, and then they're going to, the next player is just going to roll all these die, and you'll start placing them out again. Now let's get to in-game scoring. When you get to the final end here, you're going to add up all of your cards. Okay, so let's say this is what my hand looks like at the end of the game. The first thing you need to know is, did you get gold from all five areas? I did. Gemstones don't count. You have to have gotten gold in each area. If you did, you're good. If you didn't, you lose five points. And then after that, then you have to add up which of these areas that you had the most gold in because that becomes fool's gold and it doesn't count. So let me see, I got eight in the lake but I got nine in the mountains, so all this gold is thrown away. Oh no. And then you add up your total score plus any gems you got, which in this case I got four, which would give me ten points, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. Final thoughts, what do I think about the game? You know, funny story or history with me in this game. I played this game a couple of times, and each time I liked it, I loved it. And But I never bought it until just now. <laughs> I played it twice at the Arizona Game Fair. The first time I got it, I was like, that was okay. And then later on that week, I said, eh, let's play another game. And I went, that was okay. And then I went to B BGG Spring Con and went, let's play another round. I was like, that was pretty fun. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long to buy this game. This game's amazing. <laughs> and it's cheap. It's super cheap online. I think it's clearance at a lot of places, like 20 bucks. It's definitely worth your time, folks. I love the game. The game is so smart. I like how you have to go and visit all five. I like how you have to get gold in all five. Don't focus too much on those gems or you'll forget about getting gold. That's what some of my buddies did. They wanted to get all the gems because they thought there'd be some big points at the end, but they didn't get enough gold. And gold can definitely win the game for you. But I love the end game where the biggest amount is gotten rid of. It's fool's gold. So you have to go by the smaller amounts. It forces you to spread out to, all, to visit all five sites and get enough gold. Like my plan is always to get big amounts of gold in each spot. If I'm if I it, if I'm you know short in these two areas, I'm like, okay, I need to find a lot of gold in these two areas. Go. And then I'll go to those two areas and try and get as much gold as I can. 
I love that about the game. You're trying to, it's, it, it forces you to balance and spread the wealth between all five dig sites. If not, you're going to hurt yourself in the end. So uh, that being said, what an amazingly fun game. My gaming group loves this game too. Is it worth your time? Heck yes it is. Great, great, great game. All right, gamers. That's all for now. Until next time, claim on.